happy Friday. Sorry I'm a few minutes late, but I was uh, working on another video, which will go up this afternoon. It's House of the Dragon related. Uh, and I'm going to make it up to you. I got some tea for you today. I got some tea. Yeah, that's right. Get ready. Get ready. It's pretty hot. I'm excited. I got some... Wa that's right, Philip. I got some Wanda updates for you. Let me welcome all the new members. And then if you have anything you'd like to ask me, don't worry. At the end of every stream, for the final 10 minutes, you can ask me anything that you would like. Uh, hey, skinny boy German. Hey, David Felton. Let's see here. Hey, Barbie Minaj. Hey, Nigel. That's a cute pick. Hey, Becton. All right. So thanks, everyone, for joining. We have a really good stream plan today. I'm excited. All right. So let's jump right into it. So store. Oh, so the way it works is we'll do the three stories of the day. Then you can ask me anything that you would like for the final 10 minutes of the stream. And then I'll do a couple of shout outs. And also, Monday is Halloween. Hey, Stephen. Welcome back. Hey, Chad. Chad. I love Chad. Uh, that's a great name. Fun name. All right. So anyway, um, there will be a live stream on Halloween. Uh, and also on Sunday, there's no more House of the Dragon. Oh, I'm so sad. But I will. Hey, Alex, I will be doing. Oh, look, I already get this is the third time I already has gifted some membership. That's memberships. That's so kind of you. Hey, Bart. Uh, so anyway, uh, there will be movie math, of course, on Sunday. And then if you're a BTT movie club member, we're going to watch Aliens on Sunday night. And then also there's the White Lotus. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to live tweet it or not. I might be a bit much after uh, doing the Aliens watch along, but I'm excited for that. That's going to be really great. All right. Okay. So nice to see everybody. Hey, Platinum Diva. I'm so sorry you've been sick. You were missed. I always love seeing you. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, story number one. Boop. Oh, look, I didn't cover up Wanda. She looks great. I think that's just like some fan art or from maybe a Fortnite video game. But boy, does she look fantastic there. What a great character. And the red energy, I just love Wanda so much. All right, so of course, yesterday, uh, late yesterday, it was announced, it was leaked that Disney, Marvel, is working on a new Disney Plus series called Vision Quest. And many of you tweeted me and said, Grace, is this true? Well, I looked into it, and I heard from not just one, but two sources that it's totally true. Hey, Cole, it's totally true. They're working on a Vision Quest show, and not only are they working on it, but the writer's room is apparently about to start up. It's early days, though. It's early days. Don't think it's going to be tomorrow. But Vision Quest is a real thing. Oh, I'm excited about this. Now, everybody also said immediately, is Wanda going to be in it? Where's Wanda? I love it. So Wanda... Uh, everybody wants more Wanda. Is this, she going to get a movie? When is she going to show up again? And they've kind of tried to give her a bit of a break. They're like, was she crushed by the rubble? You're like, of course she wasn't. But they're like, you don't know. You don't know. I think they want to make it a Hey, Iceman. I think, understandably, they want to make her return a big deal. And I think that they're doing that. So also, at WandaVision, I think, well, Loki is the most watched. I think that WandaVision probably is right behind it. And the WandaVision was iconic. WandaVision jumps, you know, kickstarted this whole Disney Plus Marvel experiment. It got it off to a grand start. It's the only Marvel uh, Disney Plus show to get any kind of recognition from awards shows. And it really was phenomenal. Remember, it was that great teaser during the Emmys. Oh, it was good times. It was good times. I hope Loki season two brings us back to that. But there was some discussion as to whether or not WandaVision would get a season two. And, you know, they kept saying it's very successful, but Wanda's story definitely isn't done, et cetera, et cetera. So I can tell you, based on what I'm hearing, some stuff about where, where Wanda's going to be next. Well, first off, pay attention to Agatha, Coven of Chaos. Now, she's not going to be a big part of that show. I'm hearing... Steven says, fans, we want a solo Wanda project. Kevin gives everyone Wanda supporting characters in a show. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Reese, I think you're probably going to build. I think the problem is that in the comics outside of what they just did with Multiverse of Madness, you know, the No More Mutants storyline, Wanda's never been the star of a story. Even that story, she wasn't the star. She was the villain. She was in the background, even in House of M. So I think that they don't have a, a, a concrete guide from the comics to like be a crutch for them to rely on. If they tell us, yes, there's Children's Crusade, but Wanda isn't a big part of Children's Crusade. That is more about Billy and Tommy looking for their mother. And they, of course, eventually find her, but that's not really Wanda's story. It's about her children. Uh, thanks, Max. Uh, thanks, thanks for checking in. So I think that's the problem. And they have a new Wanda comic coming out. 
So maybe that'll help. Maybe they'll have some really great successful stories right away and Marvel can go yoink <laughs> and take that back. All right, so anyway, speaking of Children's Crusade, from what I'm hearing, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, will be like Children's Crusade. Probably with Agatha, who has babysitted before, dealing with uh, not only Wanda's children, but hopefully, you know, uh, the Wiccan and Hulking, Hulkling kind of romance situation happening. So that would be great. And I hear, while it's not a done deal, that if Wanda were to show up on this show, on Agatha, it would only be at the end. So it would only be like in a final episode kind of way. So maybe they'd tease her at the second to last episode. But so Wanda's not going to be a big part of Agatha Harkness, but she could be, if they make the deal, some, someone who shows up at the very end. Now, this show is going to be called Vision Quest, which I think actually fits really well with Wanda Vision. Wanda Vision, Vision Quest, the double meaning of the words, I think, is very clever. So it seems to me like this would be like a, a de facto season two for Wanda Vision. And, you know, Vision certainly was left in an interesting position. Um, I don't think that they're going to have, I haven't heard anything about Magneto. You know, Doom was a very big part of Children's Crusade, uh, but I doubt, that, I would be surprised if that's where they introduced Doom. Maybe a hint, maybe. I don't care, Bear says, what about it being a Native American term? Um, that would, I think you'd have to ask the Native American community if they were upset about that kind of cultural appropriation. Uh, to me, I mean, I can't comment on that. You know, uh, I think Vision Quest is a cool name, but if I ran Disney, I'd probably run over. And Disney does have a, divi a whole department on inclusion, as do most studios these days. And I'd go over, uh, the Enchantress Leave is okay with it. Uh, if I were, yeah, Stephen, that Russell Donovan artwork is fantastic for the new Wanda comic. But, you know, I'd go over to my inclusion group and I'd say, is this offensive? You know, maybe they could put a Native American character in it. Uh, it is, you know, in the Northeast, you know, with Salem and stuff like that. So they could maybe work something out. Maybe I'd do that to cover all my bases. I'd be like, mm, be careful. But will Vision Quest take place in the Northeast? Because here's what I want to tell you. White Vision showed up in the West Coast Avengers, who are on the West Coast. And Wanda was a member of that team. So I wouldn't be surprised if Vision Quest goes over to the West Coast and explores the West Coast Avengers, where Wanda and Vision spent a considerable amount of time with, you guessed it, Wonder Man. Now, my side question is, if Vision is getting his own series and Wanda will probably show up there, what the heck is going to happen on the Wonder Man show? That, mean, that makes that show make absolutely no sense. If Wonder Man isn't, a if Wonder Man isn't the backdoor season two to WandaVision, what the heck are we doing with that show? I mean, I hope it works out. Uh, they're still working on securing the lead. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I just get, I don't understand why they would draw it out like that. Although I've watched a lot of Disney plus Marvel shows at this point, and I guess I would understand why they would, would draw it out. Wonder Man is a superhero character, for those of you who aren't aware, who was part of a love triangle between Wanda and Vision, because his are the brainwaves in the comics that were the baseline for Vision. Vision, of course, took on a life of his own, literally, although, of course, in the MCU, Vision is a copy of Ultron, so that's different. But in the comics, he was a copy of Wonder Man. And so after Vision lost all of his emotion to become White Vision uh, and went away, uh, Wanda did have a romantic relationship with Wonder Man. So Wonder Man, when you cast Wonder Man, not only is he supposed to be an actor who's having tough times, uh, but you have to think of someone who, who fits with uh, Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen to, to make that, tri that love triangle. So anyway, more Vision and Wanda coming. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Uh, I th and again, what do you guys think? Um, Jim McMahon says Vision Quest. Disney knows that's an 80s movie, right? I mean, I don't think anybody really remembers it too much. Uh, where, there was a question here. Chris says, could Vision Quest tie into Armor Wars? I don't see how it would. I told you I think Armor Wars, which is now a movie, is going to probably bring back um, Tony Stark as artificial intelligence. That's the only reason I can see to make it a movie. Riri Williams is pretty freaking likable, I got to tell you. They took two characters in Black Panther that I didn't particularly care for in the comics, Namor and uh, Riri Williams, and made me really think very highly of them. And she really is like a, a, like a junior Tony Stark. So I was impressed. It made me feel much better about the Ironheart show. 
Wait, let me make a note for videos I have to make. You just reminded me. Where's my list? Where is it? Ironheart. I have so many videos to make off of this movie. Wow. All right, so yeah, Vision Quest sounds good. I'm excited about it. It's going to be good times. We totally need Tony Stark to return. You guys don't care about Tony Stark. I love Tony Stark so much. Your dislike and uninterest in Tony Stark makes me sad. <laughs> it makes me very sad. All right, okay, so that's story number one. So that's to give you an idea not only of what's coming up, but also where you're probably going to see Wanda. But it's going to take a while. Uh, they're not going to just rush into a bunch of Wanda. Wanda's going to take a bit of a breather, but her return hopefully will be epic. All right. You guys, you can like to cap and not disrespect Tony. All right, so story number two. Hold on. Boop. Okay, so they're making a Venom 3. I can't believe it. I guess I can believe it. Let's take a look first at the box office uh, for uh, the first two Venom movies. The first Venom was a huge hit, directed by Ruben Fleischer, and went on to do $856 million worldwide. Steven, we've moved on to the next story, but it says, do you think they'll turn Agatha into a mentor for Wanda? Not on that show. Maybe at some point. That would be nice. Uh, that certainly would be from the comics, but we'll see. I don't know if anybody wants to see. I, w I, don't I would like Wanda to have more agency. I don't want Wanda to forever be this apologetic, scared person. That's going to not go over well with fans. All right, so... Uh, so Venom, Venom, first Venom made $856 million worldwide. Uh, the second Venom, where Andy Serkis took over, did just 506, I think largely because of the pandemic. Interestingly, though, um, they made the exact same amount domestic, 213. So the reason Venom 2 didn't do as well is because it didn't do as well uh, overseas. Uh, what do you guys think? I really liked the first Venom a lot, as you might recall, but I did not care for the second Venom. Oh, 80s model gifted a membership. That's so nice of you. Uh, I did not like Venom 2. I thought that Venom 2, um, you know, just really lost a lot of momentum. And the only reason that it did really well was because of that end credit scene, which connected to the MCU, which ended up being a total waste because he got shunted right back at the end of No Way Home. So you were like, what did we do all this for? So yeah, so they're still making another Venom because they make a lot of money. So it was announced today that not only are they making Venom 3, uh, although Tom Hardy had talked that they were already working on Venom 3 before, but now it has a director, and that's Kelly Marcel, who was the writer, co-writer, and producer on the last two films, along with Tom Hardy as a producer as well. She's gotten an upgrade, and she will now be a multi-hyphenate, a triple, you know, a triple threat with writer, producer, and director. That's wonderful. Good for her. And Tom Hardy will continue to produce. I don't know if Andrew Garfield's going to be in this. I think that the Sony Spider-Man movies went right back to being bad. It was shocking. They had, were in such a good place after No Way Home. And then all of a sudden, you know, when you see what they're doing with Morbius, uh, which I enjoyed, and you know, a number of people in the press actually liked it, but boy, fans were brutal. Uh, then I'm not too happy with how Craven's looking. And then this Madam Web garbage, you're like, what the heck is this? So I don't really know if, I mean, it would be great to have him go up against Andrew Garfield. I mean, that would really be fantastic. But let's see. Yeah, and El Muerto. I mean, it's really crazy what's going on over there. So anyway, though, Kelly Marcel is getting promoted, and it's wonderful to see another woman director take on a major franchise. I would love to see some of these doing well, uh, although with all due respect to Patty Jenkins, her first movie did do very well. Um, but then it's, you know, Miles Morales would be wonderful. I, Mika, I would, that would be fantastic. Uh, hey, Generation Marvel. <laughs> I like your emoji. I mean, your uh, avatar picture. Uh, but yeah, so I would really hope, you know, since she was so heavily involved with the first two movies, I hope that she can make it competitive. I hope she can do a really good job and make it commercially competitive. If you're not familiar with Kelly Marcel, she shot to fame as the co, as the main writer on the first Fifty Shades of Grey movie. And I thought she did a phenomenal job. As you might recall, I gave the first Fifty Shades of Grey film a good review. I thought it was interesting, and I thought it was they handled that subject material as best as they possibly could. And so kudos to Kelly Marcel, and also, to be fair, Dakota Johnson, who's Madam Webb, by the way, for doing such a good job uh, with the role. I think you know, it was a tough role to play, and uh, Dakota Johnson gave it some dignity. 
Uh, she, oh, Kelly Marcel also was a co-writer on Saving Mr. Banks, one of my favorite movies, as you know. And she also did the story for Cruella, the Emma Stone movie. So she has a pretty good track record. I'd love to have a stronger female role in Venom 3. I really liked what Michelle Williams has been doing with She-Venom and that she's like totally fine with it and the complex relationship between Venom, uh, Tom Hardy's uh, character, and then Michelle Williams's. I think that's pretty interesting, and I'd like to see that maybe explored, right? So, but you got to keep it PG-13. So that's that's an interesting conundrum for her. But let's see what she decides to do. I'd really like to see this be successful, and you know, uh, I, I'm curious. I hope Venom Three is more like Venom One than Venom Two, which was really just not good. <laughs> really not good. I, I mean, I don't. I think it was so bad. I'd be nervous to watch. I think you'd have a hard time. Ah, oh, thanks, Craig. I think you'd have a hard time getting a lot of people to watch Venom 3 in theaters unless it had some great character in it. It would need a Spider-Man, I think. Naomi Harris did a nice job. I don't know if she survived, Mika. Uh, yeah, I hope we see another Cruella 2 soon. Who knows how long that's going to take. All right, we got one more story of the day. And I had a couple of things to pick from. Uh, but I decided to pick, boom, baby, Universal Studios. So the other day, Universal... Um, had a meeting with the press and stuff to talk about their uh, latest quarter. Hey, Bobby K. And, you know, they had the main headline was about how they're really, like, blurring the line between what airs on NBC and what airs on Peacock, and they don't really care anymore. They're like, whatever. It's, you know, they're small screen and big screen. And so I thought that was interesting. Uh, but the real t interesting thing to me was the discussion of how well Universal Studios and their theme park business overall, but especially in Florida, is performing. Now, why is this so interesting? Well, as you might know, if you're at all in the theme parks, there's a war going on down below uh, in Florida like never before. Ever since Harry Potter Land opened, there has been, a, you know, the theme park wars began and they've been fantastic. They've been wonderful for us. But it's reached a new height with uh, Bob Chapek really raising prices and ruining the Disney experience, uh, particularly at Walt Disney World. He's introduced Genie Plus, where now you have to pay for Fast Pass. He's raised prices across the board. Really, it's getting incredibly expensive to stay there. And a number of people have said, F it, I'm going to Universal. You know? So NBC Universal CEO Jeff Shell, he runs NBC Universal. The person who runs all of it, uh, Comcast NBC Universal, is Brian Roberts, just so you know your executives. Now he said, when he was addressing the theme park business, he said the current success defies logic. That's really what he said. He basically said, I'm making stupid money with the theme parks. It's incredible. And they said that the latest quarter, their revenue is up 42%. Disney's making a lot in the theme park business as well, but they're making it from charging an exponential amount of money for Disney. Now, Epic Universe is opening in 2025. That's a whole new park, but it's a mega park. It's gigantic. I think it's even bigger than the current Universal Studios. And I think maybe bigger than any Disney theme parks. Uh, and Jeff Shell said the goal is to make going to Universal Orlando a week-long experience, a week-long destination. As it is right now, uh, that's right, Universal ha Studios Halloween nights are pretty fantastic. But as it is now, most people will tack a couple of Universal days onto a Disney trip. That's what I, my family has always done. But what Universal is trying to do is get people to flip that, that they'll go stay at Universal and do a couple of days only at Disney. That would be a fascinating reversal of fortune. Now, also, since Universal is, has uh, Disney on the run, this also, I think, is crucial, crucial to the chatter that they're going to buy Warner Brothers. Because what's, why is Disney such a behemoth? It's because Bob Iger looked around and first said, oh, I'm relying so much on Pixar brands, I should own that. So he bought Pixar. And then Disney discovered that they were having a very hard time attracting male, uh, men, male audiences to their park, but particularly older guys, teenagers and above. You can make little boys go, you know, you can drag them along with the rest of the family, but it was very difficult to get older guys to go to Disney theme parks. And that's why he purchased Marvel and Lucasfilm. And it was incredibly successful. So... That's right, Mika, John Carter and Prince of Persia did not work out. So they couldn't, you know, Disney was unable to create their own franchises that appealed to older guys, so they bought them. So Warner, so if, uh, wow, HTIS gifted 50 memberships. Wow, that, let's just take a moment. That's incredible of you. Quick, 
Grab them, guys. Click the link if you're, I think particularly if you're on a desktop. Tyler Rod said, hi, Grace. Do you think that the Disney Fox deal put Disney in a deep hole that was exacerbated by the pandemic? It seems like they are trying to crawl out of that hole by raising prices. I don't think that's at all. I think Bob Chapek just wants more money. I think they, you know, it's not like Warner Brothers, which, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery has a tremendous amount of debt. But H. Tiz, that was really incredible of you. You are really, that was a wonderful thing to do. Bob Chapek just wants to make more money, and he is getting more money as a result. Uh, so anyway, I think that this makes it more likely, even more likely, that Universal will want to purchase Warner Brothers. Because think of all those incredible brands and how they could put that to use in... Um, how they could put that to use in their theme parks. I mean, look at how much Marvel has helped the Disney theme parks. If, the, if uh, Universal was able to do DC, that would be incredible. Game of Thrones, Mortal Kombat, uh, Hanna-Barbera, they would just have an incredible amount of brands that they could just super plus their parks. And, you know, Harry Potter obviously is on loan. Wouldn't it be great if they actually owned it? It reminds me of how Disney put in Avatar to Animal Kingdom, uh, which they were borrowing from Fox, and then eventually came to own it. Jesse the Goodwitch says, Six Flags has their own David Zaslav situation going on. Six Flags has the license for Warner Brothers. Uh, if uh, NBC Universal acquires Warner Brothers Discovery, would they take back the IP from Six Flags or try to acquire those parks? I think they would not try to acquire those parks. I think there's nothing to do with them. I suspect they would try to purchase it. And also, that deal can't be forever. But I would think they would try and cut a deal and just pay them off. That's what I would try and do. I don't need all those parks. I don't need all those parks. I think they're fine with the ones that they have. Although if Six Flags isn't doing very well, maybe I'd buy it and strip it for parts. Maybe I'd buy Six Flags, take out the, that deal, and then sell it to another company. Maybe I'd do that. Maybe I'd be like, hey, Knott's Berry Farms, you want this? But without the Warner Brothers IP. Uh, I haven't been to a Six Flags since I was little. I used to go to the New Jersey Six Flags, which was a lot of fun at the time, I have to tell you. But I have not been in a very long time. What theme parks do you guys go to? I'm a Disney Universal person. Oh, Platinum Diva says, I love Six Flags. Well, then I hope it's, I hope it's protected for you, Platinum Diva. I've also been to Kennywood in Pittsburgh, which is a crazy old-time park. Hey, Faith and Films. I once was on uh, Cedar Point. That's great. I once was, oh, uh, look, Devin knows Kennywood. Uh, when you go into Kennywood, I am a germaphobe, particularly as you know I had my mold situation. Extina, I agree, a Game of Thrones land with a dragon. Oh, boy. But anyway, just to tell you my brief story, I went on Kennywood, and there was like a haunted boat ride. And I went on it, and it was like really old, where you were like, it was like Scooby-Doo level. The, way, the old mill, yeah. So I went on it. And at one point they blew air on me and I turned right into it and it was like the oldest tube ever. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Cause I'm a germaphobe and I don't like mold and stuff like that. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I'm not going on this ride again. <laughs> I also am a little scared of old roller coasters. But I do like Kennywood. When I first went to Kennywood, they had metal detectors. And I was like, aw. And then I went to Disney, and they eventually got metal detectors, too. Because that's just the world we live in. Uh, Paul says, is there a, a Super Mario Brothers park coming? Yes, there is. I believe, is it in Orlando or California? They just opened one overseas in, uh, I believe, Japan. But one of, the Orla one of the Universal Parks is getting a Super Mario's Land. Although, I got to tell you, I have, like, no interest in a Super Mario Land. I know, I know they're already working on a second Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, but, I mean, I'm not like, oh, Super Mario Land. I'm like, mm, what's the ride like? Maybe I'll go on it. I guess if I could go on something and, like, jump on mushrooms and be like, boop, 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 I'd be like, all right, that's kind of fun. Troy says, the only thing missing from Universal Hollywood is no roller coasters. Six Flags Magic Mountain isn't too far I got to tell you, the Six Flags roller coasters terrify me. And they're not even that themed. They're just like these twisted things of metal that go up into the sky. I think I was at camp once, and we went also to a Six Flags, and I was like, I'm not getting on this ride. Everybody else did, and I was like, it's not even themed. They stuck a Batman sticker on the front of it, or maybe it was Superman. I was like, they stuck a Superman uh, logo on the entrance, and they just painted it blue and red, and I'm not going in there. <laughs> Devin says, next time you're in Pennsylvania, check out Idlewild. I will. 
Travis says, do you think Disney will try and get Simpsons back so they can... Oh, that's a good point. Oh, touche. Maybe they could have like some kind of like uh, like a hostage trade. They'll be like, we'll give you this if you give us... Although Universal seems to be holding all the cards in that scenario. All right. Hey, Mararia. That's a nice picture of you. Uh, all right. So yeah. So yeah. Six Flags is scary. It's too scary for me. All right, so uh, those are the three stories of the day. Uh, it is, hold on, let me get rid of that note. It is 4.15. You can ask me anything you'd like until 4.25 on this Friday afternoon. It's not going to rain anymore on Halloween. I'm quite happy about it. For a while there, it was going to rain here in New York City on Halloween, and I was pretty upset about it. Extina, Studio uh, Ghibli, that would be an interesting land. It would be like no rides. You just think about a lot of stuff. Mika says, Twitter's new owner thoughts. Elon Musk, that's right. He took over Twitter yesterday. I had something special planned for you guys with Twitter, and now it's on hold because they put a freeze on stuff. So hopefully it'll launch next week. I shouldn't have said anything. I jinxed it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I hope it all works out. But yeah, I, I love Twitter. I love talking to you guys on there. So I hope he doesn't ruin it. Uh, Writer Boy says, I've been seeing a lot of YouTube channels talking about the return of Storm. If true... What would you want to see from her? Do you think she's returning? I think the MCU could capture her well. I haven't heard anything about Storm coming back. I do think, though, that she and Wolverine would probably be the first ones that you would see. Um, but, I mean, if Ryan Coogler isn't going to create her, I'm, I would be extremely nervous about the character, to be honest with you. I think I would be... Even if he doesn't do it in one of his own projects, I would just be like, Hey, Ryan Coogler, what's your fee for overseeing the creation of a, pro a character? Juan says, I hope that uh, Namor is properly portrayed in Black Panther. If he was mentioned in the trailer, I hope he gets properly treated. I can't speak to that, you know, Juan, because I'm not that familiar with the cultural background of that uh, uh, Mesoamerican god. But I can tell you that he's a very cool character, and he's really awesome. So I, I would think people would be happy with his performance. Devin Henry says, without Wanda, there is no, a where, where is this Agatha show leading to? I think it is going to lead to Wanda, but only at the very end. And I think it's going to be about, it's going to be about probably, I can't confirm this 100%, but it does seem that it's going to be about Hulk, uh, Wiccan and Hulkling, which would be huge. It would basically be Heartstopper for the MCU, and so that would be a big show. Uh, Present Progressive says, now that James Gunn runs DC and seems to be still good with Kevin Feige, do you think there is a chance that we will get a Marvel DC crossover? Well, he doesn't run it yet until November 1st, and I thought Kevin Feige's answer was quite funny. He said he's got a lot of work to do for us until his movie next movie comes out, which I thought was funny because he's like, I don't know how he's going to run DC and do everything he needs to do on Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and the special, but whatever. And he said, I'll be first in line. I always think those things are hilarious because I'm like, what do you expect Kevin Feige to say? It's like when they asked Margot Robbie how she felt about Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn. You know, you stick a smile on your face and you say, I can't wait through gritted teeth. Or you could pull a Dwayne Johnson and just totally ignore it. But no one asked him point blank. Dwayne Johnson, I'd be curious what would happen if somebody were to ask him point blank about how this is developed. But yeah, uh, I, as I said in my video covering that announcement, if anyone can get a Marvel DC crossover, I do believe that it's James Gunn. Jay King says, does Wakanda Forever land in your top five of the year? Uh, I think so. It's really good. I think so. I'll tell you this. I can't wait to see it again. Oh, Ben Becht Becton, that's so nice of you. Why are they giving, sol giving both Agatha and Vision solo projects and not Wanda when she's easily one of the most profitable, popular characters Marvel has right now? She should have been the first to get a solo project, in my opinion. Will she get one eventually? Becton, as I said, you might not have heard at the beginning of the stream, I feel there is a real lack of Wanda starring comic books where she is the main character. So I think they're not quite sure what to do with her. I also think that she's, they're going the Mickey Mouse approach. You have your most popular character, you hold back on them so as not to overexpose them, but also so as not to, you know, ruin them. You want to be very careful. So I think that they're trying to make her even more popular. She certainly had her due in Multiverse of Madness, and she, where the movie made almost a billion dollars. So I think she will eventually get her own movie, but I think this is kind of them buying themselves some time, to be honest with you, but while still keeping Wanda in the picture. Craig Puckett says, William Jackson Harper rumors over Twitter, all over Twitter, do we have our read? Craig, I'm glad you asked. I checked. He's not read. Uh, William Jackson Harper just joined Quantumania. P many people speculated that he might be Reed Richards because in the comics, Kang and Reed are related. 
variations of each other. Uh, actually, I think he's a variation of his dad. But anyway, um, there it's he's not Reed Richards. Extina says, Namor or Aquaman? You know, I've resisted doing that because people don't like to see them pitted against each other. I still think I like both. You know, I really like the last Aquaman movie, uh, and I'm hoping the second one delivers. But I think they're both fantastic. I think it'll be hard for them. I will tell you, the action with Namor is incredible. Uh, he does the flippy flips in the air, and he's just a very cool character. So... Uh, I think it's going to be tough for Aquaman, but they, these movies are far enough apart that hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, Jamie, I will consider watching Interview with the Vampire, but since I'm not covering it, it's tough for me to watch it. I'm, now, I, I, guess, I just got Wednesday screeners, which I will now be working on. Mr. Jojo says, hi, Grace, love your videos from Dubai. Oh, hey, Mr. Jojo, I appreciate that. It's so nice to see you. All right, let me see. I think I got everybody's super questions. Paul says, best MCU show so far, ranking video. I'm not going to tell you here, but after Black Panther 2 comes out, we're going to go to rank town on the MCU shows and movies in separate videos. So we'll have fun. Xavier Ramos says, what are your thoughts on Yellowstone? I just binged the first three seasons and half of season four. Kelly Riley is acting her butt off as Beth. I like Kelly Riley. I'm glad she has a successful show over there. And I'm certainly intrigued that Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren are joining that world. And I got to tell you, I'm a Kevin Costner fan. I like his work. Uh, remember Hatfields and McCoys with Bill Paxton? That was good stuff. But I just haven't watched this show. It's one of those things where, again, it's too far along. Uh, it's a little bit more... Uh, networky, you know, in terms of the pacing that I'm really into. So I just have not gotten into Yellowstone, but I do respect its success. Garab says, Hey Grace, do you think the OG Daredevil trio return in Born Again? Lots, uh, by the way, lots of love from India. Ah, oh, thank you, Garab. I appreciate that. Uh, I think the longer it takes, the less likely it is. I think, which would be a shame because that was a great Karen and Feige. Uh, Feige. Feige. <laughs> Feige Nelson, or is that Kevin Feige? He even kind of looks a little like Kevin Feige, at least in the coloring. I think the fans will just absolutely riot if they don't bring them back, so hopefully they put those deals in place. Let's see here. Whelmed says, hey, Grace, since we were talking theme parks and roller coasters, have you been on the Velocicoaster at Universal? I think it's the best ride at the park, probably the best coaster I've ever been on. Darn it, I suspected that was the case. It's a little scary for me, but I do like Velociraptors in Jurassic Park, Jurassic World now, but I haven't been down to Florida since the pandemic started, so I have not gone on the Rise of the Resistance. I haven't been on the Millennium Falcon ride. It's very sad. I haven't been on Mickey and Minnie's Railroad Adventure. I'm sad. Stupid Florida. All right. Marvelous says, is this the year Marvel gives Latino representation? Well, we'll see how you feel about Black Panther, too. I hope so. I think it was good. Brian says, any prediction for Black Adam's box office this weekend? Oh, that's interesting. Well, it so far is tracking exactly like Hobbs and Shaw. So hold on. Let's see what Hobbs and Shaw's second weekend drop was. At the end of its first week, it is like almost exactly identical to that film's first week. I think they're both at 83 million point something. So Hobbs and Shaw on its second weekend, hold on, fell 57.9%, which isn't bad, a little under 60%. So that wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be bad. Let's see what happens. Platinum Diva says, I just rode Pantheon at Bush Gardens, and it's really amazing. Up there with Fury 325. You are a roller coaster fan, Platinum Diva. I'm impressed. Mika says, and or reviews on the live streams. I don't know about that. Maybe on some of the episodes, but I'm certainly probably going to try and review the season when it ends. I'm through episode 10. I'm now ahead of you. And episode 10 was really incredible. There's a ha haunting moment with Andy Serkis that I'll never forget. Lewis, I'm sorry, I haven't watched The Peripheral yet. As I said, I just finished The Watcher, which I enjoyed quite a bit, actually. I know other people said they didn't like the ending, but I thought The Watcher was phenomenal all the way through. It reminded me of, like, the, uh, um, the horror stories I used, or scary stories I used to read when I was a teenager. Uh, so I really liked it. Um, and now I'm going to work on Wednesday, The Wednesday Show, uh, which is coming up. Devin Henderson said, could Black Panther chatter hurt Black Adam this weekend? I have no idea why they started promoting it two weeks early. 
That's incredible to me. I looked at the schedule and I was like, wow, look how long I have to make videos. But again, I'll make videos pretty close to the release anyway, because, you know, information and other stuff will drop. But boy, what a lead time on that movie. Devin Henderson said, could Black Panther check? Oh, so you just asked that. Sorry. All right. Let's see some other questions here. Barbie Minaj says, hi, Grace. What story villains do you want to see in the Batman 2? I would like something crazy like Clayface or Professor Pig. Barbie, I'm sorry. I don't like Professor Pig. As many of you know, I don't like that character. I like the Mr. Freeze idea. What's going on with that? Let's do Mr. Freeze. Uh, but I'd be okay with Clayface. But we know what I love? With Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves as Batman, Batman is the star and the villains are secondary. How cool is that? That's just really a phenomenal, that's such an important uh, accomplishment. Happy Halloween to you too, Heather. Dent, there, I know, apparently that storyline about Madam Web where they're trying to rescue uh, like Ben Parker or something or a young Peter Parker is true. Uh, it's like Terminator basically, like, oh, we gotta go back in time and save John Connor. And I'm like, that sounds horrible to me. Uh, Kayla says, do you think Henry Cavill should play Aegon the Conqueror in the prequel? No, it's too much like The Witcher then, right? I hear, you know, for a minute there, I thought you were talking about Doctor Who for some reason. And I know they're trying to bring movie stars into the new season of Doctor Who because Disney just, just like totally plussed their budget with this new partnership. Henry Cavill could be on Doctor Who. I think that would be great. Jamie says, any news on the Jon Snow spinoff after the House of Dragon finale? No, I haven't heard anything about that, I'm afraid. But, you know, you would think they'd probably want to announce that pretty soon uh, to get people excited about it, just, just to keep the franchise in people's minds. Oh, I'm trying to be careful about spoilers, you guys, from some of these things. You know, I've turned over a new page. I'll hint at stuff, but I really don't want to ruin your movie-going experience. I think that's really crucial. So I'm not going to just flat out just tell you stuff that should be a big reveal. I'm pretty upset that some of this stuff is leaked, quite frankly, because it would have been amazing for it to be revealed on the project. The Enchantress says, favorite male and female mutant. Ooh, that's hard. Every time I say female now, people are like, oh, Grace, you said female. You know what context I'm talking about. Uh, I guess for favorite guy X-Men, I guess, I guess I think Cyclops is wonderfully complex. I also like young Professor X, to be honest with you. And then as for a female mutant or women mutant, lady mutant, I like Rogue. I've always been a huge Rogue fan. And I got to tell you, I think Mystique is really cool. Uh, not the Jennifer Lawrence version. All right, Generation Marvel says, oh, that's very nice of you. Grace, do you think that the MCU will change out Scar for Hulkling and have him and w Wiccan have a relationship? I'm nervous about it. I'm nervous about it. That sounds like the kind of cleaning up that Foggy would do to try and make things simpler. But I think that would be a huge mistake. Cole Jackson says, Grace, what do you think of race bending Magneto? As a Jewish person and in light of recent national anti-Semitism, I see it as an erasure and offensive. Well, they haven't done it yet, Cole, so please let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I think you bring up an extremely good point. And, you know, it was very upsetting to see Kanye West reinstated on Twitter this morning by Elon Musk, considering how destructive and alarming his comments have been. So I think with that in mind, I think you could not be more right. They don't have to race bend both of the characters to kind of throw, uh, you know, I think they're trying to highlight how uh, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. and Ma uh, Malcolm X inspired the original two characters. But I mean, I think they could just change the ethnicity of Professor X and it would still work. I, you know, Giancarlo Esposito is just great casting. He's a great Lex too on the Harley Quinn show, by the way. Welm says, fan cast question. Javen Walton, uh, ashtray from Euphoria, is cast as Damian Wayne in a Batman film. How would you feel about that? Not good! I think he has too wide of a build. To me, Damien is more delicate. And also, Damien is half Middle Eastern. So I would really want to see that reflected in the casting. That would be crucial, in my opinion. Sam says, what are your... Oh, no. Adrian says, opinion on Dancing with the Stars being on Disney+. Plus. I don't watch that show, but it still trends every Monday. So I think it's worked out really well for uh, the service. So good job. Uh, Sam says, how are you feeling now about Joker 2? I'm nervous. I've heard it's going to be quite violent. I'm a little worried about that. I want it to do well. I don't want it to cross a line. 
But I was worried that the first movie was going to cross the line, and I thought Todd Phillips handled it incredibly well. So I'm excited about it. I'm really excited. I'm excited to get a first look at Lady Gaga in the movie. Lisa, I'm glad you think it works on uh, Dancing with the Stars. Keith says, does Black Panther have an end credit scene? It has one mid credit scene, and that's it. Just one. Marvelous Jack says WandaVision seasons. WandaVision, Agatha, Wonder Man, Vision. I don't think, I don't know if she's going to be on Wonder Man, to be honest with you. I think if she's going to be an Agatha and Vision Quest, I think it's unlikely she's going to be on Wonder Man. Mika says, is Wakanda Forever the best Marvel sequel? Well, I really liked Iron Man too. I got to tell you, I thought that was fantastic. Uh, but I think what's so great about it is that it feels like a proper sequel. Somebody asked me, they said, I don't watch a lot of Marvel movies these days. Can I watch Black Panther 2? And I said, the only movie you have to have seen to watch Black Panther 2 is Black Panther 1. And the fact that it's that direct a sequel, I think is really extraordinary. Writer Boy says, in your opinion, who would win? Phoenix or Wanda? Ooh, I think Wanda. I think Wanda plays dirty and wants it more. I love Wanda. Nicholas says, what's the problem with saying female? I'm confused. I said, Nicholas, I said, you know, nobody likes when you refer to women as females. You know, that's considered really bad. I think it's still a musical. It's a dark musical. It's a bloody musical. It's like Sweeney Todd. Julian, I'm excited about the Frasier reboot, but I'll be less excited if it's just Kelsey Grammer. If David Hyde Pierce isn't on that show, I don't really see what the point of it is. Oh, it's 4.31. I love talking to you guys. I go over all the time. All right, let me do some shout. Also, the, al the allergy season is playing havoc on my contact lenses. Whoa, got to switch to the glasses. All right, so what's going on, everybody? Just tell me where you are, what you're doing, if you have any weekend plans, just so I can say hi to you. Uh, Matt, happy Halloween to you. You're dressing up as a taco. That's fantastic. Jerome says, I'm in London drinking. Ah, oh, your Friday night has started. Oh, it is Friday night in London. Sam says, about to put some up some shelves. Wish me luck. Good luck, Sam. Anthony says, where could Marvel go after Secret Wars? Oh, that's a question, Anthony. I think that's so far out. I, I, think, I think we're good for now. Julian is in Kansas City. Matthew Blossom is streaming from work. Troy says, I need easy Halloween costume ideas. I love it. Uh, Dent says, having a lovely autumn day near Lake Ontario with a warm blanket. That does sound lovely. Look at Cole eating McDonald's in the UK. Just got home from working. Oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, Lisa, I'm so sorry that you have to go to a funeral in Chicago tomorrow. My condolences. Uh, Jerome, I'm glad you love shout outs. Cesar Coronado, I love that name. Looking for a sweet treat. I'm always partial to a good cookie, as you know. Uh, Mark Chapman says, currently doing deliveries for my job. Oh, that's great. I'm glad we could keep you company. Julian says, my phone was stolen and I'm currently tracking it all over LA. What are you going to do when you find it? You're not going to confront the thief, I hope. I hope you'll just go tell the police and be like, it's over there. Go get it for me. Uh, let's see here. Keith is eating pizza and rewatching Tales of the Jedi. Oh, I'm glad you enjoy that. Uh, Lisa says, oh, oh, that's my pleasure, Lisa. That's a very touching emoji you chose there. Chris Khan is in the bathtub. Oh, I love it. Uh, Dane O'Leary says, finishing up my work day, about to go to the market for groceries. I hope you find something fun. Paul says, going to see Halloween Ends tonight. Uh, so excited. I liked that movie. I hope you have a good time. Yeah, Alberto says, call the cops, Julian. I agree. Don't, you're not, you're not Batman. Don't be a, don't be a hero, man. Sam says, soft cookies or crunchy cookies? Soft cookies all day. Get those crunchy cookies out of here. I don't want that. Uh, Anna says, hey, Grace, I'm at the library writing a report for work this weekend. I'm going to Universal Studios for Fright Night. Any recommendations? Oh, wow. You're going to have such a good time. Is it Universal Studios in Florida or in California? I hear the sea one. There's like some kind of uh, Halloween horror nights that's like the sea, like, uh, like a, a coastal town. And I heard from reviewers that that was quite good. So uh, you might want to check that one out if you're in Florida. Uh, Extina says, was my birthday yesterday, recuperating at the moment. Sounds like you had a really good time. Chad says, packing up my desk to head home. I'm in Times Square today. Oh, that's great. Um, they might soon have a casino. Michael Mark says, going to New York City to see Book of Mormon. Oh, my eye. 
uh, on Broadway. I hope you have a great time. I bought Back to the Future tickets. I'm pretty excited about it. Back to the Future is going to Broadway. So I'm pretty, I, I did buy tickets because people in the UK said they like the show so much. Danny says, on, voca on vacation, but always checking your, out your awesome content and coverage. I appreciate that, Danny. I hope you're having a really good time. I'm honored that, you, I, that, I was able, that we were all able to join you on your vacation. Mikey Brace says, in Yorkshire, UK, counting my tills at work, having your voice in the background. What's a till? Dressing up as Regina George from Mean Girls this Halloween. Oh, that's a great costume. Uh, Reese says, you joined me having some wine and getting ready for my brother's sixth birthday party in Scotland. Oh, wow. You have a little, very little brother. I hope that you guys have a great time. Newswriter22 says, thanks for all the content, Grace. My eighth day of positive COVID-19 results, so it has been a fairly terrible week. I'm so sorry, Newswriter22. I hope you feel better soon. Eight days is rough. Oh, Attila's a cash register in the UK. Thank you, Sam. And Writer Boy says, after, having spending, uh, after spending time with all of you, I'll have to read the last bit of my novel, my editor sent. Uh, nervous. Oh, that's great. Good luck, Writer Boy. I hope you have good notes. I hope it's constructive. And Lewis Crickmore is going to see the color purple next Friday. Ah, look at us. We're a theatrical group. I love it. All right, everybody. My eyes are really bothering me, so I'm going to go take care of my contacts. And then I have one more video, which will go up uh, maybe in about two hours. All right, everyone. See you soon and see you Monday, Sunday. Sunday for movie math. Uh, Sunday night if you're in BTT Movie Club. And then on Monday for a Halloween live stream. That'll be around noon, as I told you before. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way... Thank you, everyone, for your generosity today, not only towards me, but especially towards uh, everybody else with the gifted memberships. That was just really incredible. I will not forget it. All right, bye.